Earlier today, the Resources Minister began his ministerial statement by saying that exploration is a lot like being a member of parliament. Now, as much as members on both sides of this House do love to don a high-vis vest and pose for a photo in front of a coal mine, at first I thought it was a stretch, but maybe it's not. I mean, after all, if you work in exploration, you go to work to make more money for the mining industry. If you're an MP in this place, at least one from the major parties, apparently you also go to work to make more money for the mining industry. Because that's what this bill is about. It's ensuring the financial future for some of Labor's biggest donors after they did a bit of an oopsie and forgot to issue their mining tenure properly. Now, first we have the mining amendments. The bill will retrospectively validate mining leases granted between 1989 and 2010 with potential um, administrative deficiencies, as they've been called, relating to the requirement for a hard copy lease to be issued. It turns out there have been 990 three mining leases issued improperly, including 86 coal mining leases. Whoops. Surely in this context, calls made by a number of submitters on this bill to make tenure instruments for resource activities publicly available in Queensland seem pretty reasonable. As the Queensland Conservation Society said in their submission, this bill really exposes the systemic issues with this government's administration of mining and petroleum leases and the special lax treatment they get. I hope the department's promises to discuss this with stakeholders like the Environmental Defenders Office, Lock the Gate and the Wilderness Society is more than placation, and they won't just be brushed off in future. One of the leases covered by this bill is the New Ackland Thermal Coal Mine. As we've heard from a number of members already, a bunch of you will know, I'm sure, that before I got elected I represented the farmers fighting the expansion of this mine for Ackland Stage 3. That expansion would trash some of Queensland's best agricultural land and ruin precious groundwater resources in that region. But as always, rubbish. Order, members. Order. Extraordinary. So they're going to they're going to continue with open cut coal mining, and it's going to have no impact on the agricultural land they're digging into or on the groundwater. Unbelievable. We've got to see this technology. Anyway, it would trash the agricultural land and the groundwater resources in the region. But as always, the fossil fuel lobby has been working over time to keep dirty coal on life support, ramping up political pressure to the point that the government admits, in effect, that they wrote this bill after noticing it threatened the legal operation of Ackland under that mining lease. Even without an expansion, this mine was already investigated for potential environmental breaches, and the coal that it's produced has helped drive us closer to the precipice of runaway climate change. The major parties say they finally accept the science that the climate crisis is happening now and it's caused by humans, but they still can't bring themselves to admit that fossil fuels, coal and gas are the drivers. The International Energy Agency can. They say if we want to reach net zero by 2050, Labor's pretty weak, put it off for now target, there can be no new coal or gas, yet Labor continues to brag about approving 18 new coal mines last term and opening up Queensland for yet more fracking. This bill lets them keep those mines open and continue approving new gas projects, including in highly sensitive areas like the floodplains of uh, the Cooper Creek um, in Lake Eyre Basin Channel Country. It provides for gas production leases made under the 1923 Petroleum Act to continue beyond their expiry if a renewal application was already made but not yet decided. Apparently the department's already been doing this unlawfully for years. Apparently it's time to formalise the special deals for organisations like Blue Energy and Origin who have already failed to comply with their works plan but will be given free reign to keep expanding their fracking projects. This bill also uh, allows gas authorities to prospect to continue in force if their applications for production leases remain undecided on 1 November 2021. This is relevant because under current laws at least six authorities to prospect and their 16 production lease applications under the old Petroleum Act would expire on 1 November this year. And so they should. Gas is an old, dirty fuel and the science and economics are clear. We don't need any more of it. We appear to have even left behind the rhetoric about gas as a so-called transition fuel. Yet this bill, this is a bill from the Labor government that assumes they'll be granting new leases beyond the 1st of November this year. The gas production continues. The Greens will be voting against the amendments to the Petroleum Act 1923 in part three because we don't believe there should be any new gas leases granted or renewed. Despite the greenwashing attempts by both major parties and their big donors like Santos, gas is not clean. 
when we take into account the fugitive methane emissions that are even more potent greenhouse gases than carbon dioxide, it's potentially just as, if not more dangerous for our climate than thermal coal. Fundamentally, gas is a fossil fuel and it has no place in our future energy mix or economy. In a state with an abundance of renewable energy resources, as the government readily admits and trumpets almost daily in here, and we do not need it. We'll be supporting the amendments in the bill to give urban utilities and unity water investigation, monitoring and enforcement powers to implement water restrictions in their service areas. We'll also be supporting the changes to ensure water service providers don't have to publish highly sensitive cyber security information and reporting metrics. Because there's no distinction between coal and other mining in the bill's retrospective amendments to the Mineral Resources Act, we will support that fix up of the government's historical mistakes. As we've said many times before, there's great potential in Queensland to continue and even expand mining of the minerals we need for a clean economy like cobalt, copper and lithium. But we do not need new thermal coal. And with green steel already a reality, it's likely we won't need metallurgical coal soon either. This government should rule out any new thermal coal mine approvals and immediately get to work on a jobs and retraining plan to transition away from coal and gas in exports as well as energy. I think Lock Gate put it well in their submission, striking speaker, when they said, the Queensland government frequently says it cannot make any environmental laws retrospective under any circumstances and weakened the mine rehabilitation laws in 2018 on that basis. However, it appears to have no such qualms providing retrospective law changes that favour mining and gas companies. The double standard is very stark in relation to this bill. The Queensland Resources Council and the gas lobby even wanted to strengthen their guarantee to keep exploiting our resources for a, for a pittance, while Labor continues to refuse to raise royalties and make them pay Queenslanders a fair share. They wanted the bill amended to say the minister is required to grant the petroleum lease applications on extended authorities to prospect, rather than just that they may. I mean, you almost have to laugh at the arrogance of that organisation and the requests they're making. But that's what you get when an industry is effectively given free reign in Queensland in exchange for the millions in political donations they give. The secret deals, special legislation and public bailouts for greedy coal and gas companies continues and this bill is no exception.